<coughs> Good evening. <coughs> Welcome to the February 18th Whitehall City Council meeting. Um, I'd like everyone to please stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Ms. Aubrey, you please call roll. Andrew? Oh, present. Present. Morrison? Present. Bailey? Present. Rodriguez? Present. Elmore? Present. Connison? Present. President Clark? Present. Now for the approval of the minutes, I'll accept the motion. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the February 4th minutes. Second. Okay, we have got a first <coughs> by Ms. Connison, a second by Mr. Cantor. Clerk, please call the Cantor? Yes. Pat? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Thank you. The minutes have been approved. At this time, we'll come to our first poll public of the evening. I'd invite folks to come forward and please state your name and address, and you'll have up to three minutes to speak. legislation uh, for some what I think are simplistic and shallow arguments. Here though is precisely why it should be defeated. If passed as is, it will force both careless, junk collecting irresponsible citizens and caring responsible vehicle owners to both obey the law's directives. <coughs> this at a loss and or cost which both types of citizens will have to incur. Why? Because of the Equal Protection Clause in the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, that which guarantees citizens equal protection under the law, as Councillor Connison alluded to at one of the meetings, that which only Councillor Cantor acknowledged. <coughs> so, if code enforcement is enforcing it only on those who think they are a problem, but not those who aren't, and that is a violation of the citizen's equal protection under the 14th Amendment. You cannot enforce laws with one person and not another. As such, if enforced equally, it will cause a financial burden on both irresponsible and responsible citizens alike, plain and simply. So, pass this legislation, and you not only find a way to get its citizens inoperable or junk vehicles, but you also create punitive financial measures against otherwise decent, responsible citizens and homeowners. Passing this legislation and doing anything otherwise is setting the city up for a lawsuit, denying citizens their rights under the 14th Amendment. And so, if you pass this legislation as is tonight, I would ask those in this room, live on Facebook, and all across Whitehall to keep an eagle eye out on this legislation's enforcement and the city's use of it to ensure that it's being uniformly enforced. And if not, I would say that citizens should justly seek counsel to consider options. If you're not willing to do what's right, then why should the citizens lie down and take that abuse? Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. 
I come to you today to ask you to reconsider or amend ordinance number 002-2020. I want to start off by saying I completely understand what you're trying to accomplish with this ordinance, but it's people like me who will have to pay the price. I want to share my situation and tell you how it will affect my own family and other families with a similar situation. We have a trailer that is currently stored in the backyard. It is only back there during the fall and winter months and is parked on the grass. We also have a spot that we could put it on which consists of brick pavers. It looks nice and is well kept, but it is my understanding that this would not be acceptable under the proposed ordinance. So, we would have to get concrete or asphalt slab installed which would not only burden us financially, but it would also require us to find a contractor. And finding a good contractor for a smaller job can be rather difficult and time consuming. And I believe, according to code, concrete would have to be five feet from the property line, limiting us on where we could put the concrete slab. The ordinance would cost my family thousands of dollars. Our backyard is kept up and looking nice. We are hardworking people and we follow the rules. We could now be punished because of a few people in our city who have gone to the extreme and parked <coughs> cars, boats, trailers, and campers. And if the proposed ordinance is passed, you will be punishing many others for the actions of the few which I find unacceptable. Again, I ask you to please reconsider or amend ordinance number 002-2020. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else? Oh. James Black, 491 Robin Avenue. Also on that same ordinance, um, I have a rather large backyard. I do have a camper that I park in my driveway. However, if I want to be able to park it in my backyard, I do not have the financial resources to go and get a large concrete pad to do that. Um, there's no reason that anybody should be put under financial strain for the few people that seem to be an issue. I just don't have the money to afford that, and I don't think it should be forced on anybody. Mr. Black, can I get your address? I, I didn't catch it. 491 Robinwood. 491, thank you, sir. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Kelly Young. I'm at 4200 Edna Street here in Whitehall. The same ordinance also. Um, I currently have road papers that my wife put in the ground over 20 years ago in our backyard. So it was a muddy mess when we bought the place in uh, 96. We first put limestone down, took that out because it's just limestone sucks and it didn't it doesn't do any good, it just still creates a mess. Mm -hmm. So we went out and purchased a bunch of old road papers that used to be in Lancaster, uh, brought them up here. She dug all of it herself, put it down. If you look at my house from the front, you'll see our sidewalk <coughs> from the sidewalk up to our house, it's all brick. She did all that, all the landscaping and stuff. And for us to not be able to park a vehicle on occasion, instead of having in the driveway, you know, would be a hardship because a lot of times she wants to park back there as to not inconvenience people clearing the snow from the road. You know, and that way we can have one back there, one in the driveway, and it's not hurting anybody, and we have room for it. There's a lot of driveways out there that have gravel or grass growing up all over the city, <coughs> you know, unkept <coughs> driveways. But there's a lot of people that take good care of their yards. And some of them are, have a vehicle in the back that's for their, their son or daughter growing up. They're, they're keeping that vehicle where they can't afford to put tags on it and everything. But now we're saying that we're gonna, they're going to have to either tag it and put insurance on it when they can't afford it, another hardship, or like myself, I'm going to have to rip out all those road papers, put concrete or pavement down, which is another hardship. But some, of this, some people put stuff back there to keep for their kids. You know, they don't want to put it on the street where it's nice, where they can't afford to tag it and stuff, they're just saving it. And this is going to, you know, inconvenience everybody. And is, the city's not going to pay for it, I assume. I don't think that's in the provision here, but the city, so once again, the taxpayers are going to take the big burden here. And I don't know if you guys understand, a lot of people in this community don't make the money to be able to afford to be able to take that and put that burden on themselves. You know, they live paycheck to paycheck, a lot of families here. So I'd ask that you reconsider this measure. And you know, basically, get rid of it for the for the best, better of the community. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is 
Is there anyone else who'd like to speak this evening? This first poll council? Poll public? Thank you. Next, standing committee reports. Administration and financial management. Chair Bush. Thank you, Mr. President. Administration and financial management did meet last Tuesday. We only had one resolution. I think it will be introduced tonight. Our minutes are on file. We will meet again next Tuesday sometime after 6.30. Thank you, Chairperson Bailey. <clears throat> Community and Elder Advocacy, Chairperson Elmore. Thank you, Mr. President. Community and Elder Advocacy did meet last week. <clears throat> Our minutes are on file. We have no pending or draft pieces of legislation. We will meet again next Tuesday in the back about 6 30. Thank you. Community Standards and Enforcement, Chairperson Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. Community Standards and Enforcement met last Tuesday. We have uh, four items on the agenda this evening. And we'll meet again next Tuesday, sometime after 6 30. Our minutes are on file. Thank you. <coughs> Economic Development, Chairperson Morrison. Thank you, Mr. President. Economic Development also met last Tuesday. Our minutes are on file. We'll get, meet again next Tuesday sometime after 6.30 in the back. Thank you. Infrastructure, Maintenance, and Services, Chairperson Heck. Thank you, Mr. President. Infrastructure, Maintenance, and Services <coughs> met last Tuesday. Our minutes are on file. We have no drafts or pending legislation. We will meet next Tuesday sometime after 6.30 in the back. Thank you. Public Safety, Chairperson Thank you, Mr. President, Public Safety met last week. Our minutes are on file, and uh, we'll meet again in the back sometime after 6.30 on Tuesday. Terrific. And finally, Parks and Recreation, Chairperson Camper. Thank you, Mr. President. Parks and Recreation also met last week. <coughs> Our minutes are on file. We have no uh, pending legislation. We'll meet again next week in the back after 6.30. Thank you. Officials reports, Mayor Kim Maggard. I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. I appreciate uh, your comments. Would just like to inform council that uh, the administration has tentative uh, contract agreements with the full-time uh, dispatchers and the part-time dispatchers, and I will be bringing uh, a tentative contract to you all by next uh, city uh, council committee meetings, and uh, we'll have legislation for you as well at that time. I would also like to let everyone know that on March 16th, on Monday evening at 6.30, the Whitehall area Lions will be having their uh, annual auction at the Woodlands, and everyone is welcome to attend. And uh, that raises money in order that we can help people with seeing issues, also glasses, and we give to a variety of organizations, uh, leukemia, <coughs> uh, cystic fibrosis, things like that that help many, many people. So come out and support the Lions. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. City Attorney, Michael Bettis. Thank you, Mr. President, members of council. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Um, I would like to update council as well as the public. I've received uh, several calls just from the public as it relates to uh, the Roses parking lot. Uh, we're back again uh, as it relates to that. I'd like to thank uh, Code Enforcement um, and Director Woodruff for, uh, for their diligence in actually citing roses and letting them know uh, that they are in violation. I'm sure many of you know, both council members as well as the public at large, you have to drive through that parking lot, not only to just to go to roses, but to go to McDonald's, to go to Chase Bank, uh, to go to Kroger, as well as if you go to the laundromat. And so that you understand kind of my thinking on it, I could go uh, the harshest route and go the route of nuisance abatement actions against roses as it relates to that, but I need the public to understand why I have not done that. I haven't done it for this reason. In the conversation that I have, not only with the public, um, as well as with some members of council, to do that I would, would mean that I would get an injunction against roses to shut down the parking lot. So shutting down that parking lot actually means you would no longer have access to Chase Bank. You would have to find another route into McDonald's. You would no longer be able to go through to Kroger. And you, if you shop at Roses, you would not be able to shop at Roses until they abated that nuisance. So here's what uh, they have done. They have hired a property manager, Avison Young. And the reason why I say that name publicly is because if you get any damages to your vehicles as it relates to driving over that parking lot, call my office, I'll get you in contact with their property manager, and then you can deal with them directly as it relates to those damages. They have given me, given me a tentative schedule to repair that lot. Um, they said they can't get it done during the winter months of Colum of, in Columbus, 
but they intend to start work sometime in, in March. Um, I'll get more information on that and I will share that with the public, but I would, uh, I just wanted counsel as you're talking to, to members of the public and for you who are here to know kind of what's going on with that. So as you're driving through that parking lot, I know it's like avoiding landmines, uh, but to the extent that you can avoid those landmines, uh, they do intend on repairing that lot and I'll give them that, that time frame. Um, or the next best step would be going uh, through the courts, but I don't want to do that to the public because that is kind of in a catch-22, so I just wanted everyone to know that. Thank you. <coughs> Director of Development and Public Service, Zach Woodruff. Oh, I'm Dan. I apologize. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got nothing. <laughs> okay. So now it's back to you. Okay, well, I have no official report other than what you have in front of you. We would like to publish that. You can find those, those reports online at the, on, the, on the city web page under the auditor's uh, page uh, and finance. So anytime you want to take a look at what we do with the finances, they're, they're out there for you. Feel free. Get on the website. Browse around. Thank you. Thank you. Treasurer Steve Quinzel. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no official report this evening. Thank you. The following official reports have been filed in the council office since our last meeting. We've got the mayor's report to council for January 2020. And then under communications, petitions, and claims, we have three items. Minutes for the November 13, 2019 Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. Minutes for the November 20, 2019 Parks and Recreation Commission meeting and the agenda to the February 12, 2020 Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. Ms. Ogg, would you please call roll as to whether each member of council was given a copy of each item of legislation listed on the agenda prior to the meeting, including any last on pieces? Andrew? Yes. Pat? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Thank you. Under third reading, we have Ordinance 2, 2020, amending Section 903.32, parking of motor vehicles on lawns prohibited to include rear yards. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 002, 2020, and move to have a table to our March 3rd meeting. Second. Okay. There has been a motion to table Ordinance 2, 2020 by Councilman Rodriguez, second by Councilman... Cantor, any discussion on the motion? Clerk, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Thomason? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. The motion has been tabled for two weeks. Ordinance 3, 2020, amend. Amending section 1126.13, limitation of parking in residential districts to add a lot maximum for impervious parking area. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce ordinance uh, 3 2020 and move to have it tabled to our uh, March 3rd meeting as well. Second. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez introduced ordinance 3 2020 and moved for the tabling of it until our March 3rd meeting, seconded by Councilman Morrison. Any discussion on the motion? Clerk, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Thomason? Yes. The ordinance has been tabled until our March 3rd meeting. Ordinance 4, 2020, amending section 112310C, titled General Commerce District Special Permitted Uses in the codified ordinances of the City of Whitehall, and to add brewery and distillery facilities. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 4, 2020, and move for its adoption. Second. Okay. Ordinance 4, 2020 has been uh, moved for adoption by Councilman Rodriguez, second by Councilman Elmore. Any discussion on the motion? Clerk, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 4, 2020 has been adopted. <coughs> Ordinance 5, 2020, 
Amending 1125.17d, storage of garbage at non-residential structures of the codified ordinances of the City of Whitehall. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 5 2020, move for its adoption. Second. Mr. Rodriguez has introduced Ordinance 5 2020 with a second by Mr. Canker for its adoption. Any discussion on the motion? Clerk, please call the roll. Canter? Yes. Pat? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 5 2020 has been adopted. Under second reading this evening, we have got 6 2020, which will be title only, and it's amending the zoning map attached to chapter 1122 of the 1970 codified ordinances of the city of Whitehall, Ohio, and as subsequently amended, allowing a special permit under 1123.10 C37 to allow Buzzsaw Brewery Company to operate a brewery facility on the property located at 951 A and B Robinwood Avenue, parcel 090-000. 311-00, property owned by Charter Properties. And again, that's title only this evening. Under first reading, we have Ordinance 8, 2020, approving and making a supplemental appropriation of $80,000 from unappropriated monies in the Law Enforcement Trust Fund 241 to the Law Enforcement Trust Set-Aside Account 241-000-51,000 and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce ordinance number 8, 2020, and move for the suspension of all rules. Second. Ordinance 8, 2020 has been introduced for suspension of all rules by Councilman Coniston, seconded by Councilman Cantor. Any discussion on the motion? Clerk, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Coniston? Yes. Thank you. The rules have been suspended. Move to adopt. Second. There's been a motion to adopt by Ms. Connison, seconded by Mr. Cantor. Any, any discussion? Clerk, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Pat? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 8 2020 has been adopted. Ordinance 9 2020. Advancing $6,184.40 in unappropriated monies in a law enforcement trust fund 241 to the Bulletproof Vest Grant Fund 267, making a fund transfer of $8,065.60 from unappropriated monies in a law enforcement trust fund 241 to the Bulletproof Vest Grant Fund 267 and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 9-2020 for the suspension of all rules. Second. Ordinance 9-2020 has been introduced and moving for suspension of rules by Ms. Coniston, second by <coughs> Mr. Morrison. Any discussion on the motion? Clerk, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Coniston? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Move to adopt. Second. Uh, move to adopt Ordinance 9 2020 by Ms. Constance, seconded by Mr. Morrison. Any discussion? Clerk, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 9 2020 has been adopted. And our last item this evening is Resolution 4, 2020, resolving to approve the then and now certificates and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Resolution 4, 2020, move for suspension of all rules. Second. Resolution 4, 2020 has been introduced for and moving to suspend all rules uh, by Mr. Bailey, seconded by Mr. Rodriguez. Any discussion? Clerk, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Pat? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Move to adopt. Second. There has been a movement to adopt by Mr. Bailey, second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any discussion? Clerk, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. 
Resolution 4 2020 has passed. We are now at the point of our evening for our second full public. Again, we invite folks to come forward. Please state your name and address, and uh, feel free to speak, just so you're not speaking on the same issue that you already addressed council. Gerald Dixon, 3877 Doney Street. I just extemporaneously uh, regarding uh, Mr. Bivens' uh, discussion or telling us about the roads parking lot. The thing that I would, would have is really a question and a kind of a concern is that that parking lot was uh, built at a time uh, for something that was much larger. Perhaps it was a wool co. I'm not sure, but the thing is, is every time I hear about the Roses parking lot, it's Roses which is having to pay for the repairs to the parking lot, but yet a large majority of the abuse of that parking lot comes from people uh, using that as an entrance to get to Kroger's because they don't go down the lines over this way to get to Kroger's. They sail across the parking lot. And I'm just curious as to how much of uh, that expense that Roses has to keep uh, incurring uh, is paid for by others like Kroger's or someone else, their customers who are actually using that lot as a, as a uh, crossover. I mean, that just concerns me because I keep hearing poor roses is responsible for their lot unless they make stanchions or something in a way that people can only go a certain way. It seems, it seems wrong to make roses keep paying for the abuse that others incur. That's my thought. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Jim Graham, 644 Greenwood Road, Whitehall, 43213. Um, I'm here to uh, talk about issue two, or ordinance two and three, which you tabled. Um, and, you know, I understand that you have some uh, hard choices to make on this uh, ordinance. But, you know, I, I trust that you're going to come up with some solutions. Uh, some workable solutions that will address the issues that, that are out there that we have throughout the city uh, with the parking situation. I stood before you before uh, and I said that almost every piece, every ordinance that has to do with the code or something in the city always has a positive and a negative impact. And so for some people it's going to be really good. And it's going to have a negative impact on some. Here's what, I, here's what I want to say about that. When I was in school, and you probably all heard the same thing, you know, we didn't get to go to recess because somebody acted out. So just, here's the deal. One rotten apple can spoil the whole barrel. That's what it amounts to. Um, and so keep that into consideration. It is something that we need to address. There's going to be good and bad come out of it for some people. I think overall, for the majority of the people in Whitehall, you're going to come up with a good solution that's going to uh, fit the majority of the residents here. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, <coughs> we'll now move to our community day. <coughs> Does anybody have anything they'd like to add to what the mayor already shared with us earlier. Uh, we have the State, State of the City on March 11th, and that will be at the Washerstrom Building at 4500 East Broad Street. Um, from 5.30 to 6.30, it will be uh, meeting your neighbors, talking to officials, and there will be food available. And then at 6.30, the address will begin. So if you really want to know what's going on in Whitehall and some of the good projects that we have coming up and some great announcements, I would advise you to attend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Does anybody else have anything? Well, April 4th is going to be the Easter egg hunt. I know you all asked me about that in December. <laughs> I think it was October. <laughs> was, it, was it October? Um, this year, it'll be the first year that we have it over at uh, WCCA has it at um, Whitehall Yearling High School Stadium. Oh, so we are going to show off the field. And no mud. And no, no mud. mud. <coughs> Not no mud. What's that? 
made something. We don't have a date for that yet. We usually coordinate that with the school. So as soon as I have that, I'll let everybody know. Um, uh, uh, February 28th is the first uh, African night at the high school. I believe it's at 6, but you can check out Whitehall High School's Facebook page to get the details. Thank you. We've got the Lady Rams this Friday night. Second round, uh, they play Licking Valley at Whitehall um, in the uh, tournament. Monday night, the boys play either at Upper Arlington or Canal Winchester. It'll probably be canal, you know. Okay. We'll now poll council. Mr. Camper. Oh, I'm first. <coughs> oh, cool. Well, thank you everybody for coming. And uh, thank you everybody that's watching um, on Facebook. You know, as we sit up here, we have a lot of, a lot of decisions to make. Sometimes they're tough. It's, we had a resident say he's been up here and he knows he, he has sat in our, in our seat. Um, but I'll say this, and, I, and I, it's steadfast since 2016. When it was first introduced, I didn't like it. My position hasn't changed. Um, and there are certain reasons. Um, we have certain properties, a very small percentage of properties that we have a major problem on. Um, and it's just not in the woods, it's Yearling Road, whatever. Um, they're around the city. But with that said, it's the other 98% of our city that we don't have a problem with. We don't have a problem with those. But yet they could be in trouble for having a vehicle, a trailer, uh, a chamber in the back on the grass. And I don't think that's right. Um, some people, as we've sat at this table, have said, well, it's the appearance of the city that when people come to our city, they see everything. Well, see, that's, that's not always true because some of the issues that we're dealing with is our properties and things we can't see. So if you have 15 or 16 or 8 or 12 vehicles or whatever you have in the back, I can't see them. But if I drive down certain streets in this city, I see problems that need to be taken care of that have not. I do believe in code enforcement. I feel we have the best code enforcement officers in Franklin County, and Mr. Sorrell and Mr. Brown. Um, and they can't, I realize they can't get to, a, to everything. But there's some things that I've been seeing for an extended period of time that hasn't got corrected. So I feel we should correct that. Um, we had a gentleman in here, I think it was Mr. Young, that said it's the cost to our residents. A lot of our residents do live payday to payday. And it's a lot of money to put a concrete slab in their backyard um, because you might have a boat and a trailer or a car. But again, with that said, I do know that we have a problem in the city, and there are a few issues with certain properties that do need to be taken care of. I've said it before, and I said it tonight in the back room. I don't know the solution. I truly don't. I didn't know in 2016. I don't know in 2020. But we're going to try to work through this and work it out. Um, the people that call me, you know that I call you back, and I thank you for calling. There's a couple of people that are sitting in here now that left messages, and I call back. So I want to thank you so much. And as always, um, good night, girls. Daddy loves you. She was Ms. President. Thank you. Ms. Hay. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, thank you for everybody that came out and spoke. I know it's not always easy. Thank you for those that reached out to me. Um, since this was tabled for two more weeks, please continue reaching out. I'd like to hear everybody's opinion. Um, and that's all I have. I hope everybody has a wonderful night. Thank you. Mr. Morrison. Thank you, Mr. President. We'd like to thank everyone watching, and we'd like to thank the audience that came in and gave their opinions. And we truly do listen. Uh, everybody has an opinion, and we're up here to decide which one fits this community the best for all the citizens. Y'all have a good week, and thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Bailey. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to thank all of you for coming, those of you who have engaged. Appreciate that. And Larry, thank you for your comments. That's all I have. 
Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we're outnumbered tonight. Look at that, 15 to 14 up here. So, um, yeah, that's good comments this evening. And um, uh, so I've got a couple uh, retro uh, birthday wishes to my dear friend Robert Bailey, who turned uh, really old last Tuesday. Uh, and Dan Miller, who turned even older last Ooh. Saturday. <laughs> and. Um, uh, Again, it's kind of uh, retroactive, but Lori, your comments two weeks ago were really beautiful, but it was just amazing. And I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to be saying that prematurely because you might have more than that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, those, you had some wonderful comments two weeks ago, and that was just beautiful. And uh, uh, I don't know, this public, but I mean, again, at one extent, my apologies for like, you know, condolences for your loss in your family. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Miss Elmore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. Um, I want to thank everybody that came out to speak today. Your comments don't go unnoticed, and they will be entertained. Um, every, everybody that spoke, everybody is not going to be satisfied with the outcome, but my hope is that everybody will be able to come together and we can make a Whitehall the city that all residents of this, this community want to have. Um, it's just a difficult decision, and there's a lot of controversy concerning this, this whole piece, both these pieces of legislation. But I am confident that we have people up here that, um, that, are, that understand, that understand what you guys are going through, that we have to manage ourselves. We, we have to go through the same thing. So it affects everybody, not just the people that have spoke. Even people out there that may be even scared to come here and speak. I will say one other thing, that the state of the city is a very, very important event to come to because it does give you highlights of what's happening to the city. And I think you do yourself a disservice when you don't attend and you don't stay abreast of what's happening in the city. And the next thing you know, things are moving and, and things are being built and you, people are wondering what is going on. Those are, the, those are the times where we need to come together and find out from our city what is actually happening and how can I be a part of um, improving, not just talking about the, you know, um, shedding bad light on things because I think that what happens in the city of Whitehall um, it's good. It doesn't feel good at the time, but I'm sure it's going to get better. And I know that we can look back on some things that didn't feel good at the time, but Whitehall is better for it now. Um, one of the other things is um, I want to uh, talk again about black history because this is the month. Mm -hmm. And um, there are many accomplishments um, that have been contributed to the history of America. And it didn't just stop with um, those that we can look in textbooks and see their contributions. But 400 years later, they're still, we are still making history. And history is not something that stops, it continues. As long as you live too, you will continue to make history. As long as all of us live, what we've done today is history tomorrow. That's a part of your history. So all the decisions that we make that affect the city today, tomorrow, no matter when it is, it's going to be history. And it's something that we ought to look back on and be, and be happy about. There are going to be naysayers. There are going to be people that are constantly negative about everything that happens in Whitehall. However, the good and the majority of the people outweigh all the others. And what we need to do is continue to work together. We need to work together. We need to stay off of social media. And if there are issues that we have with this city, this is the forum for it. Afterwards, it's the, the forum to talk to your city council people. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging everybody to do that. We don't bite. We don't. <laughs> and I say, look, for those people that came forward, it takes a lot of courage to do that. It takes a lot of courage for people, their first time coming in here, and to get up and stand up and not know what to say, but to say it anyway. And I'm thankful for you guys, because it gives us another thought process, 
processes and other things to entertain as we go through and we look at all these pieces of legislation. Come here, sir. So, um, thank everybody for coming. Thank you guys for listening. I will say one last thing. <clears throat> Do not wait to tell people you care about them. I don't care if it's your family, your friends, your neighbors. Let people know how much you care about them because it makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Connison. Councilwoman Elmore, I'm so sorry for your loss. I know that this has been a difficult night for you. Um, I, I think a lot of you know that I've kind of been on the fence with this and you know I've spoke out um, to, to many. This is the first time um, since I've been on council for the eight years that I have received an overwhelming number of emails, um, phone calls. Um, I've done my best to try to get back with everybody. I, I do lead a crazy life um, as far as working kind of far. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit from the heart because I have lived in Whitehall my entire life. Um, I moved out briefly and then I came right back because this is home. Um, this is home to many. It's a very diverse community. Um, when I'm talking with people and when I hear people in favor and I hear people against, um, a lot of times I hear, um, I, I ask them where they live. Not that that matters a whole lot because we all live in Whitehall. But it does a little bit too, because a lot of times what I hear is, um, and there are different areas in Whitehall. And, um, you know, let, let's face it, since I was young, people would say, oh, Fairway Boulevard, um, that, you know, that, that's the nicer area of Whitehall. Oh, you live on the south side of Whitehall, that's the bad side of Whitehall. So for years, we, we've always heard that. And to, to not acknowledge that, is, is just wrong. Um, many phone calls, many, many phone calls. Um, I want to tell you a little bit personal story about myself and my family is um, we're not well to do by any means. We, we are Whitehall. We, um, we volunteer. We do a lot of social service. We um, are diverse. We, um, we care. Um, it took us 25 years to go on a vacation to get enough money together. It took us years to get together enough money to put a new driveway in our home. We care about our, our home, but there's many, many times or there's things that we have to go ahead and say we just can't do right now. So I understand when I hear community members say to me, you know what, this is gonna be a heartache. This is gonna be a heartache if I have to get rid of something or if I can't do a project that I was trying to do. This is gonna be a real heartache for me and I, I feel it for those people. I also listen to the people that say, I don't wanna look over a junkyard. I don't either. I don't wanna look over a junkyard but I want to work on this. I want to continue working on this until we can come up with something that works best for the community, that works best for our citizens, so they don't have to sacrifice something that they have been wanting to do for years and years, whether it's 25 years, whether it's two years, it doesn't matter. So I thank you all for listening, and I thank you all for coming, and we will continue working on this. Thank you. Um, I too would like to echo my colleagues who said thank you everybody for coming out and for those who were able to come out and join us uh, in person this evening and stepping forward. This uh, process is uh, very charged uh, on both sides. It's, it's very important. Um, and I think it's, you're seeing the depth and concern that this body has in the fact that we've had some very deep conversations on them 
and did not feel in a position that we were ready to go this evening, and yet we're going to have some more conversations on it. So this is not being decided lightly, uh, trying to do as much due diligence and being as responsible as we can to do the best for the majority of the citizens of the city of Whitehall. That's all I have. Mr. President. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Is that a motion to adjourn? A second by Mr. Cantor. Clerk, please call roll. Yes. 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 Bailey. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Elmore. Yes. Thomas. Yes. We are adjourned.